What is going on guys? In the last video, we animated one of our first lights based on the API that we've created on the PLC side. And we've animated all of that in Factory Talk View Studio. You can see it playing right now. Very, very simplistic animation, but it does allow us to essentially link the HMI to the PLC. And today we're going to be looking at adding the rest of the elements and be able to create a simple animation which is going to be based on our PLC system. So without any further delay, let's get right into it. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. So in case you haven't noticed from the previous video, you can hit this stop and this play button in order to simulate the screen. So I'm going to stop it right now and we're going to design the last three lights. So these lights are going to be placed within this uh, rectangle in order to simulate just a regular street light. I'm going to control C essentially copy or you can also right click and then hit this copy button and then control V in order to paste. And of course, we are going to have three different lights. So I'm just going to pull this to the side in order to be able to work on it more easily. So the first one is definitely going to stay red. The second one, it needs to be changed as well as the third one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in in order to make this a little bit easier and more pleasing to look at. So let's just scroll on up. So first one, second one and third one. So the middle one, of course, is going to be yellow. I'm going to double click in order to select the group. And you see this once again, just to make that point a bit clearer. Once you select the group, there's going to be this little square that goes around all the elements of the group. And since mine are stacked, they are going to be on top of each other. So I'm going to look at the two images and I'm going to essentially go into properties. And here, what I'm going to do is instead of being red off, I'm going to change that to a yellow off. And of course, we do need to define that through the library. So once again, we're going to right click this little triple dot menu and we're going to launch library. And here in order to stay consistent. So once again, this is red off. So we're going to select yellow off. This is going to be this one. We're going to click on copy and then paste from the library and we're going to name it yellow off. I'm going to hit OK, hit OK. And I believe we do need to change that to be 48 because it does change it automatically. So 48 is going to be our size. We're going to hit OK. Then I'm going to click in the same image. And once again, just to drive that point home, when I keep clicking, I am selecting the different images. As you can see on the bottom here, it selects between image six and image five. Since they are stacked, it's very difficult to tell. One other way would be to drag an image over, you know, which one's selected. If you do control Z, then you still have the same one selected. So once again, if I select the other image and if I drag it out, as you can see, it's the red one, control Z, and I have that one still selected. I'm going to right click, go into properties, and this is red on. So we're going to change that to a yellow on lunch library. So this is our yellow on. Let's make it this one. I like it a lot. Copy, paste from library and name it yellow on. Very straightforward. Hit OK. Hit OK here as well. And we are going to change the comment to be uh, 48, just like we did with the other one. 48. Hit OK. And one thing that we do need to do is, of course, change the tags. So remember that the tags that we've used in the animation are going to now change. So instead of this bool two, we are going to go back into the PLC. And for light one, the yellow status is going to be on bool one. So here we can just, instead of going through the tag menu, you can just put a one right there, hit apply, close, and then go to the yellow one, right click, animation, visibility, and then change that to a one once again. And I accidentally erased the square bracket. We can put that back in, hit apply, close, and let's test this animation. I can just hit play and we will notice that it's probably on a green right now. So let's see here. We're going to just make this page a little bit smaller. As we can see, we are the yellow light is currently on and then the right light is on. And of course, when you copy paste elements, they are going to stay with the same tags. That's why both of them are on right now. 
So let's go back. We're going to stop this and we're going to add the green light, which is going to be the last light that we have. I'm going to zoom in once again in, or, in order to make it more visible for you. Right click and then properties. Instead of going with the red off, we're going to have green off. Line short library. And then for green, we're going to use this one in order to match the other ones. Copy, paste from library, green off. Hit OK, hit OK, common 48. And I believe this stays at 48 unless we zoom out. And then we're going to change the other one as well. So general, instead of red on, we're going to launch library, green on. We're going to hit copy. And then we're going to paste from library, green on. Hit OK, OK, common 48. Common is already 48. Apply. Hit OK. And then, of course, we do need to change the tags once again, visibility. And I know at the top of my head that this is going to be a zero. Hit Apply, Close, and then change the other one. Visibility, type in a zero. Hit Apply, Close. And let's test the animation. So this should be everything that we need for our street light. We're going to play with the alignment in this video as well. So I'm going to hit play. And of course we have the green light, then it's going to be yellow. And then last but not least, it's going to be red. And let's just watch one more cycle just to drive the point home. As you can see, this is light one status and it's going to cycle once this one is gone to red this is going to be green again then i believe five seconds later it's going to switch to yellow or 10 seconds and then three seconds after the yellow light it's going to switch to red so just like a normal light that you would expect on the street looks pretty good let's do the other one as well so i'm going to select these three elements i'm going to align them this way but i'm going to also copy paste them in and i want this one to be uh, horizontal instead of vertical so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just roughly place the elements because I do want you to learn how to use this alignment pane extremely extremely important I use this all the time so you can align bottom in order to make these kind of pop together but we are going to essentially create the tags so I'm going to right click and then I'm going to once again go into animation and here we do need to confirm so we are on the green one and going back to the PLC code light two green is going to be boolean three so here i'm going to change this zero to a three i'm going to hit apply close select the other green animation visibility three and then i'm going to hit apply close yellow is going to be four so i'm going to right click animation four one important point to uh, be careful with is that you can create the visibility for the entire group not the stack of uh, each individual image and the way that's done is if you don't double click so you're essentially selecting the group and you can see that on the bottom left hand side here so it's indicated that i'm selecting group five so if you right click and you go into animation you will see that i can select the visibility for the entire group and that way of course both images are, are, are going to be either present or absent and you don't want that so you want to double click and then you're with an image 10 or image 9. So moving on to red, so I'm going to double click this animation and this is going to be my image five or sorry, sorry, Boolean five. And I'm going to change that for the other one as well. Boolean is going to be five. Hit apply, close, and let's watch the entire animation to make sure that it makes sense. And of course, we don't need the, we don't need the uh, PLC anymore side by side because we do have all the tags that we've currently programmed in this plate. So as you can see, the slide goes to yellow, red, and then this one immediately switches back to green. And then it cycles through that as well. So it's going to be green, then it's going to be yellow, and then it's going to turn red. And then this one is going to turn back to green. And of course, I'm going to be showing you a uh, essentially a recorded video of me fixing this entire image, but I'm going to be talking through it, but it's going to be in sped up motion. All right. So the first thing we're going to work on are the roads themselves. So these are currently rectangles, which I'm aligning to the center of the screen and 
the way you do this is essentially looking at the full width and full height of the screen. You can determine, depending on a certain length of your elements, you can determine the X and Y position. So that's what I'm working with. I'm working with changing the widths and the heights to match the same margins as you can see at the top and the bottom of my north to south road the margin is exactly the same as the one going from east to west and i'm positioning the elements so now we're doing the light the light is positioned within a rectangle element just to give it the same appeal that you would expect of a normal street light and i'm very picky when it comes to aligning such rectangles therefore i am making sure that everything has the right amount of pixels on either side. I am selecting them all together and making sure that the spacing is equal. I'm using a lot of alignment properties. I'm also changing some of the background properties and I'm also removing some of the borders because borders are typically causing problems where essentially the border is not the same width on every single side and it makes the image look a little bit strange. I'm also going to position these street lights exactly the same way on either side of the road so you can notice that the one that's vertical is going to be for the north to south location and the one that's being placed horizontally right now is going to be for the west to east location so that looks pretty good the next thing we're going to do is add a couple of rectangles essentially images for the roads and these are fairly straightforward but i am once again very meticulous with how i designed this in order to make this the most presentable for the customers and i do highly recommend that you spend a little bit of time playing with uh, these different shapes and seeing what works best for you but ultimately customers do pay attention to these hmis as they will be on their production floor and you do want to make sure that everything aligns properly so for example here i was looking at the width of the roads and trying to make sure that the width of those elements matches to what we would expect. And I'm using, as you can see, a lot of different shortcuts in order to copy paste the elements. I'm also using grouping quite a bit in order to maximize the efficiency. So not simply dragging one element at a time, uh, but I am copy pasting the entire group and then moving that accordingly in order to match the layout since I am having to replicate four essentially identical layouts on this specific HMI screen. The other thing that we're going to also draw are the center lines. So of course, depending on where you live, these, these might have different colors or different meanings, but essentially these are the dividing lines, which would uh, divide traffic going, you know, left to right or light, right to left, north, south, south, north, vice versa, and the stop lines. So once again, these are all rectangles. They are going to be a little bit different in shape and size. And I am trying to make sure that they match and that they are aligned. There's a lot of um, little things that are being shown within this video in a short amount of time. But like I said, the best way is to essentially start practicing, start aligning elements, start experimenting with the different widths, with the different designs. And once again, it is definitely, definitely worth worth it to spend the time in order to make this look a little bit nice and make sure that everything is, is aligned because like I said, the customers will definitely appreciate that extra attention to detail and it doesn't need to be extremely um, e extremely intricate, but you do need to put at least a little bit of detail in your designs in order to make it look nice. As you can see, I do use the zoom feature quite a bit in order to see that the pixels are aligned the way I would expect them. So the zoom feature is very, very good. Once you've placed them where you need it to go, you save the screen and then you'll be brought back to the original zoom or the original layout of the screen. And then once again, um, if you can't tell where the pixels are exactly, you can always zoom in and finalize that. All right, so this looks like a decent place to end this particular video. Once again, if we play the animation, then you can see what's going on. And of course, this looks like a decent traffic light. Um, I did lay out quite a few elements. I'm not sure if you're able to follow everything, but I do encourage you to kind of include some detail in all of your designs. As you can see, this is fairly representative on what, of what you would see in real life. And it makes it really nice and easy to understand for the customer or whoever's looking at your screen. And of course, in the next videos, we're going to expand this application quite a bit. So we're going to be looking at things like navigating the HMI. We're also going to be looking at controlling the HMI 
maximize. So at this point, we're only displaying information, but we're not necessarily requesting information back from the operator. So there's going to be quite a bit more of information. So stay tuned and make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.